Preface Stuff you're not supposed to know I didn't plan on writing part 5, but given the global movement in play to collapse the fiat financial dominance historically created and controlled by the Vatican, European royal and elite plus the retaliatory efforts by the United States Corporation to recoup their control of America, I felt a need to point out the flaws in their corporate process. You probably identify with this corporate process as legal process but it really isn't about what is legal or lawful, because all process is about the enforcement of contracts or the imposition and enforcement of corporate regulations called statutes. The best advice you will ever receive is to avoid their courts whenever possible. There is no justice to be found in those courts, unless you are a member of the Vatican, the royal or elite, or have purchased diplomatic immunity. The courts, the only constitutional court in America is the International Court of Trades, which was created because no foreign nation government would trade with the corporate United States, until they provided a way for these foreign nations, to enforce their trade agreements with America. Note, historically, the World Court was created to provide nations with a venue, to enforce their trade agreements but the corporate United States refused the court's invitation to participate, because they were denied control over the court. All of the other American courts are pseudo-courts or fictions, and simply are corporate administrative offices designed to resemble courts and all of their judges are simply executive administrations designed to resemble judges. The purpose of these pseudo-corporate courts are only to settle contract disputes, and since George Washington's government was military in structure, if either party refuses to participate, these courts cannot become involved and the dispute is dead in the water. My use of the term dead in the water is not a canard, because these pseudo-courts are unconstitutional courts of admiralty, the international law of the sea. The Washington Monument was completed in 1884, as a tribute to George Washington and his military government, which is actually a sea-level obelisk, that infers that all of America is underwater and thus subject to the laws of admiralty as opposed or contrary to the intended constitutional civilian government under common law. The pseudo-judges of these pseudo-courts have no powers without the consent of both the plaintiff and the defendant. And in every case the judge must determine that he has consent, personum and subject matter jurisdiction, before he can act or access the SESTA Q Trust. Note, all tradable securities must be assigned a CUSIP number, before it can be offered to investors. Birth certificates and social security applications are converted into government securities, assigned a CUSIP number, grouped into lots and then are marked as a mutual fund investment. Upon maturity, the profits are moved into a government CESTAQ trust, and if you are still alive, the certified documents are reinvested. It is the funds contained in the CESTAQ trust that the judge, clerk and county prosecutor are really after or interested in. This trust actually pays all of your debts but nobody tells you that because the elite consider those assets to be their property and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments. Social Security, SSI, SSD, Medicare and Medicaid are all financed by the trust. The government makes you pay taxes and a portion of your wages supposedly to pay for these services which they can borrow at any time for any reason since they cannot access the SESTA Q Trust to finance their wars, or to bail out Wall Street and their patron corporations. The public is encouraged to purchase all kinds of insurance protection, when the trust actually pays for all physical damages, medical costs, new technology and death benefits. The hype to purchase insurance is a ploy, to keep us in poverty and profit off our stupidity because the Vatican owns the controlling interest in all insurance companies. You may receive a monthly statement from a mortgage company, loan company or utility company, which usually has already been paid by the trust. Almost all of these corporate businesses double dip and hope that you have been conditioned well enough by their credit scams to pay them a second time. Instead of paying that statement next time, sign it approved and mail it back to them. If they then contact you about payment, ask them to send you a true bill instead of a statement and you will be glad to pay it. A statement documents what was due and paid, whereas a true bill represents only what is due. Banks and utility companies have direct access into these SESTA Q trusts, 
and all they needed was your name, social security number and signature. Criminal law, there are no criminal laws in America, because criminal laws would imply that the corporate United States government are sovereign, that have absolute power over all living, flesh and blood Americans, which of course is not true, because a corporation is a fiction and therefore cannot be sovereign. Man is sovereign and is in control of his own destiny and one day he will finally wake up and realize this to be true. There is however criminal contracts being enforced against us and with our consent, which are surreptitiously called criminal statutes. Our consent has been obtained by them visa via our silence and failure to act or protest, which under law is defined as tacit procuration. E.g. Tacit procuration. If someone accuses you of theft in writing and you fail to respond or deny those allegations in writing, your failure to deny or act is considered an admission of guilt or you receive a bill for goods or services that you never ordered or received and you fail to deny those allegations, your omission represents the truth of the matter, which imposes an obligation to pay. Collection companies frequently use tacit procuration to establish indebtedness to them on a discharge debt they had purchased from some corporate business. Now you're probably thinking, no criminal laws? Well, that can't be true. A whole lot of people have been tried, convicted and are doing time in American jails, for breaking criminal laws and my response to that is, true, they are in jail, because they unknowingly accepted the criminal contract on behalf of their birth certificate and consented to be imprisoned as a condition of their conviction and punishment. Their lawyer didn't help any because he reinforced that situation by and through his notice of appearance to represent you. It is the birth certificate that is under arrest, which I will explain shortly. Note, criminal contracts are graded according to the severity of the crime alleged, and that grading is identified as either summary, misdemeanor, felony or capital offenses. The criminal process usually begins with a police officer issuing a citation or making an arrest, with all or without a warrant or the police officer or county attorney prepares a complaint based upon a sworn affidavit or information, which is presented to a judge and a warrant is then issued. The defendant is subsequently arrested and is brought before a judge for arraignment. The complaint and warrant will reflect your birth name or identify you as a John Doe, if your name is unknown which is typed out in all capital letters. This is not a mistake on their part, because it is your birth certificate that is under arrest and not your living, flesh and blood person. The hope of these pseudo courts is that the flesh and blood person will be intimidated enough to accept responsibility for the birth certificate. Sounds crazy but nothing is what it seems, it's all smoke and mirrors most police officers do not know or have these details and believe in what they are doing and believe the lawyers who counsel them in law like they are gods. Big mistake on their part because just like everyone else, they too have been vigorously lied to. You can't trust lawyers to be inherently honest. Police officers are instructed to always print or type the defendant's name in capital letters but they are never told the reason why. As a precaution, you should always carry a copy of your birth certificate with you as part of your identification papers, which I will explain in the next paragraph. At your arraignment or trial, the judge will ask you if you are the named individual all caps birth name on the complaint and your natural response will be to answer in the affirmative but that is exactly what you don't want to do. Remove your birth certificate and respond to him by stating, I am making a special limited appearance on behalf of the defendant who is right here and hold up your birth certificate. Then state the following, as I understand this process judge. The county attorney or police officer has leveled a criminal charge with the clerk and against the trust, using the all caps name that appears on this birth certificate. The use of capital letters is dictated by the AS printing style manual, which explains how to identify a corporation, the clerk, who is the administrator of the CESTAQ trust, then, appointed you judge as the trustee for the trust and since neither of you can be the beneficiary, that leaves me and therefore you are my trustee. So as my trustee, I instruct you to discharge this entire matter, with prejudice and award the penalties for these crimes, to be paid to me in compensation and damages for my false arrest. The trustee judge has no alternative but to honor your demands but you have to get this right and act with confidence. 
you really need to know this information well, so that you can't be hoodwinked or confused by either of them. They will or may attempt to play some mind games with you if you display any doubt, stammer of display a lack of confidence. Appearances the pomp and majesty of these pseudo-courts is totally for your benefit and is intended to invoke fear and intimidation. If you show fear or intimidation, you get a pony ride. Note, I've seen and heard of judges and prosecutors interfering with a defendant's response, which made the defendant become confused and he was subsequently committed into a mental hospital for psychiatric evaluation. The judge and prosecutor successfully twisted what the defendant was trying to say and then the judge ordered a mental evaluation. Understand that the county attorney will be forced to pay the cost of court out of his own pocket if the case is discharged, so he isn't going to give up that easily and the judge, clerk and county attorney stand to make a pretty penny of your conviction and incarceration. So don't screw it up, if the county attorney begins to act too cocky with you, you can take the wind out of his sails by asking him to produce the 1020 for this case. If he denies the need to do such a thing, inform him that you will be taking care of that for him ASAP as soon as possible. He may move for a discharge at that point, because you are a little too dangerous or smart. The last thing that prosecutor wants is the IRS examining his files for the last seven years, because he makes money on every conviction but he doesn't pay taxes on them as a rule. He usually only declares the salary he receives. Also, should you accidentally find yourself in a mental hospital, the psychiatrist who is assigned or appointed to evaluate you is just as corrupt as the judge, clerk and county attorney and he will falsify all of your responses to him, just so that you are recommitted back into the mental facility with a review in six months. So lie to him and deny that you ever made such remarks. Of course, if you accept the criminal charges against your birth certificate, then you will instantly be deemed sane. Sorry that I had to be the one to tell you this but this is how corrupt many of my fellow judges truly are and it should explain why my conscience caused me to retire early. Before I learned what was really going on, I believed that my duties and performance were entirely constitutional. I was lied to also. Citations the citation process can be handled much easier through the mail. When a police officer issues you a citation, he is actually requesting you to contract with him. He is alleging that you violated a corporate regulation in writing, which you have accepted by signing and thus requires you to respond. The police officer is instructed to explain that your signature is merely an acknowledgement that you received a copy of the citation but in actuality. Your signature is notification to the court and judge that you have accepted or consented to this offer to contract, which also grants the judge consent, P-E-R-S-O-N-A-M and subject matter jurisdiction over you and the case. You can cancel the contract however by rescinding your consent within three business days of entering into such a contract. So across the face of the citation you should print or type in large print the following words. I do not accept this offer to contract and I do not consent to these proceedings. Use blue ink for admiralty or purple ink for royalty. Admiralty is the court and royalty represents your sovereignty. Either way is appropriate. Sign your signature underneath in blue or purple ink and in front of a notary and under your signature type, without prejudice, UCC 1-300. This is another way to declare that you may not be held responsible for this contract pursuant to the Uniform Commercial Code. Serve cancelled citation back it on the clerk court, along with a certificate of service, by certified mail, return receipt requested. This kills the citation, removes your C-O-N-C-E-N-T and removes the jurisdiction of the court, all at the same time. It really is that simple. Note. A certificate of service is a letter that first identifies the citation and then defines how and when you return the document to the court and is signed. If not denied, it becomes a truth in commerce by tacit procuration. Remember to keep a copy of everything in case the clerk attempts to trash your response, which certainly will not happen with a certificate of service or if it is mailed back by the notary. The notary is actually a deputy secretary of state and is more powerful than the court clerk.
Public notaries originate from the time of the Egyptian and Roman scribes, who were the purveyors of certified documents, which are sworn affidavits. Certified documents and sworn affidavits are truth in commerce. E.g. Birth certificates are certified documents on bonded paper. The word bonded is derived from bondage as in slavery, which makes all of us bond slaves to whoever retains custody of our original birth certificates. I bet you believe that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves and it did for a short time and then the birth certificate in the 14th Amendment enslaved us all. Summons and Lawsuits The summons process, whether it is defined a civil or criminal action, is once again an offer to contract, despite what words are to command your appearance or response. It too can be cancelled just by following the same procedure as the citation process above. A million dollar lawsuit is no different than a citation and both can be cancelled. Hard to believe, isn't it? Does your lawyer know about this? You bet he does, but he is not permitted to embarrass the court and besides, court is where he makes his money. Note, how many of you have ever attempted to avoid jury duty? All you had to do was cancel the summons offered to contract, notarize it and mail it back to the jury commissioner. Don't worry, they won't bother you, because you are obviously too smart and may influence their jury. The jury controls the court and not the prosecutor and judge and if you know that, they lose and the defendant wins, which is why they prefer only the dumbed down candidates to serve on jury. There are a few matters or issues that are next to impossible to circumvent or quash because of the depth of corruption within these pseudo courts, such as child custody and the division of property resulting from a divorce. The birth state claims the custody of your children pursuant to the birth certificate and records them under the Department of Transportation as a state owned vessel. A marriage is a contract, and all that is required is a pre and UPIAL agreement to complete the marriage. But if you are sufficiently indoctrinated to believe that a judge or mayor or a minister or priest must join you in holy matrimony and you subsequently applied for a license, now you both have married the state as well. Now the state is entitled to its fair share of the division of your marital property should the marriage not work out, or should you die call probate. Some people might say that a divorce should be included on this list of impossible issues, but then they don't know what I know. Divorce an action in divorce is a request to break the licensed marriage contract. If you desire a divorce and your spouse refuses to consent to a divorce, no state judge will grant you a divorce decree, because the judge has not been granted the consent of both parties. There is a way around this however, which your lawyer will never admit to, because he cannot make any money from giving you truthful or sound advice. Note. Puerto Rico is a United States territory acquired from Spain and it still operates under Spanish law. This was never changed by the corporate United States when Puerto Rico became a territory, so first you need to fly to Puerto Rico. Once in Puerto Rico, you can establish residency by simply opening a post office box for a period of three days. Just after opening the post office box, Hire a local paralegal to prepare an action in divorce for you. The paralegal will file the divorce petition immediately, which is generally a certified form document and it will be heard by a Puerto Rican judge within three days. Under Spanish law, your spouse is not required to be served the divorce petition, only the divorce decree. Five days after the decree, your former spouse will receive the divorce decree in the mail, written entirely in Spanish which cannot be contested, and must be honored by all as federal and state courts. Note, immediately after the Puerto Rican judge declares you divorced, if you choose, you can marry again by contract or by license. Both are legitimate, but no one will ever tell you that. The division of marital property and custody of children is a much more complicated issue, but at least the divorce cannot be utilized as leverage against you to divide up your property less than proportionately, which is exactly why American judges will not bifurcate the issues involved in a divorce. E.g. Divorce, division of property, custody, support and alimony. The hope is that your desire to obtain a divorce is worth more to you than anything else you own, now or in the future. Foreclosure, if you are involved in a foreclosure, or are thinking about filing for bankruptcy protection, 
to buy you more time, instead of trying to defeat the corrupt bank and your creditors in a state or federal court, where the cards are certainly stacked against you, plan to file for bankruptcy and do it this way, to ensure that you come out on top. All bankruptcy forms are printable, can be obtained online and they can be completed in longhand with an ink pen. The forms to use are, B1 through and including B8, you only need to prepare and file the first five or six pages, to obtain a case number and then you must sit through a credit counseling session, which can be done all in a day. When you are completely finished with preparing your petition, you should have filed about 58 pages in total and the filing fee is around $280. Here's the reason for using the bankruptcy courts, list all your debts on one schedule, and when it comes to listing your assets include your birth certificate and its CUSIPNO. The value of the mutual fund investment for your birth certificate can also be found online using the CUSIP number under Fidelity Investments. You will discover that it is worth multi-millions but you must have the CUSIP no on your asset schedule or the birth certificate will be discharged as frivolous by the judge or the trustee. The bankruptcy judge will then appoint a lawyer trustee to dissolve the mutual fund investment, pay off your debts and the balance must be paid to you. This procedure usually attracts the attention of the DOJ Department of Justice because they don't want the lawyer trustee to screw up and shortchange the Vatican, the Federal Reserve and the corporate United States and so they tend to warn or threaten the lawyer trustee to be very careful. Most of these mutual fund investments usually involve a group of between 10 to 25 birth certificates and so only a fraction of that mutual fund belongs to you. The bankruptcy judge will not certify the final disposition until the lawyer trustee can prove his math in every aspect of his work, because the judge inherits responsibility for the trustee's errors, if he made any. After the lawyer trustee resigns, you can probably cut a deal with the DOJ or you can proceed on with the same bankruptcy proceeding and the newly appointed lawyer trustee. Now isn't that easier and better than attacking? or defending yourself against the bank and a bunch of greedy creditors, knowing full well that the cards are stacked against you because of the Vatican and the Federal Reserve System. While you are in bankruptcy, you are protected. No one can proceed against you for any debts or foreclosure, as long as you have a bond or sufficient assets, the birth certificate guarantees that aspect and while in bankruptcy, you won't have to pay on any of those past debts. Note. There is a process to follow to determine your CUSIP no or you can ask a stockbroker friend to help you or hire a broker on the side to assist you. There are people in the Patriot movement who also know how to apply the formula which converts your birth registration number and or social security number into a CUSIP number. I paid to have mine done and discovered that I am worth about 167 million. It's all fiat money but as long as it can be spent, who cares? I hope that this entire expose has enlightened and elevated your personal knowledge, and will benefit you now and in the future. Pax Vobiscum peace be with you.